the goal of our approach is to help developers identify inconsistent or opaque behavioral changes to their software systems. We consider any dynamic change in a program's execution that cannot be easily mapped to a static modification to be inconsistent. Since developers modify their systems statically, we believe that dynamic inconsistencies may be able to highlight interesting behavioral changes for further investigation. Our approach can detect modifications in the system, its test suite, or in its execution environment. We start by considering two versions of a system, one before and one after a change, although any two arbitrary versions can be chosen. We generate a static call graph for each version of the code using a static analysis tool. Our approach is analysis agnostic. Any static technique for generating a call graph can be applied. We also generate a dynamic call graph for each version by running the system's entire test suite and tracing its execution. As with a static analysis, any technique for generating the dynamic call graph can be used, as can any means for executing the system. Our current prototype is implemented for the Java language and uses the dependency finder framework to generate the static call graph and a custom built aspect to generate the dynamic trace. The nodes of the static and dynamic call graphs represent methods, while the graph's edges represent calls between methods. In our notation system, an S represents facts that were identified by the static analysis, while a D represents facts that were identified by the dynamic analysis. A plus means that a fact was added as a consequence of a change, and a minus means that the fact was removed. By overlaying the static call graphs, we can differentiate between those elements that were statically added, removed, and were unchanged between the two program versions. Similarly, we can overlay the two dynamic call graphs to identify the elements that were dynamically added, removed, and were unchanged. We then compose the four graphs to split the result space into 16 partitions, each of which captures different aspects of the differences between the two program versions. The 16 partitions can be further broken down into four different categories. These are unchanged, not executed, consistent, and inconsistent. The three unchanged partitions correspond to calling relationships that were not modified between the two program versions. For any given change, we would expect these three partitions to contain the majority of the call graph elements, and in practice we find that over 99% of elements fall into these partitions. We do not believe that developers will investigate the unchanged partitions, and will instead concentrate their efforts on the other partitions, which capture the differences between the versions rather than the similarities between them. The two not executed partitions correspond to changes that were statically made to the system that were not dynamically executed. The two consistent partitions map to changes that were made both statically and dynamically to the system. This is where we expect most changes to occur as newly added functionality is executed or newly deleted functionality ceases to execute. Finally, we have the inconsistent partitions. We believe that developers will be most interested in elements occurring in these partitions as they represent changes to the system's behavior that are not statically obvious. The D plus partition represents new calling relationships that were not statically detected, while the D minus partition represents calls that cease to execute without apparent reason, while SD minus represents previously executing code ceasing execution. Just as a note, the final four unannotated partitions do not actually happen in practice. Next, I will demonstrate the tool itself. Our approach integrates with Ant to extract the static and dynamic call graphs so it can easily integrate with nightly build or smoke test configurations. Here we have checked out a specific version of the system, extracted its static structure, woven in our tracer aspect, and run the test suite to collect the dynamic trace. We repeat the same process with another version of the system. The output from all four analyses are XML files that are then used by our tool, the Inconsistency Inspector. After choosing two versions of interest, the four graphs are loaded from the previously generated XML files, are partitioned, and an overview of the results are presented to the developer. Comparing two adjacent versions, we immediately noticed that while 13 changes were captured by the consistent S plus D plus partition, one modification was not dynamically executed, appearing in the S plus partition. The developer can then select the partition to see what element failed to execute and determine if this was intentional. Finally, we compare the same version of the system running with JDK5 and JDK6. Two elements appear in the inconsistent SD plus and SD minus partitions. Inspecting these directly, we can see that with JDK5 a method is called directly, while with JDK6 a different call is made via reflection. Thank you for watching this quick overview of our approach and demonstration of the inconsistency inspector tool.